You're the last girl to see Faker. He doesn't want to see you. I think Faker very much wants to see me, okay? And nothing is going to stop me from meeting the one and only goat. So now, let us begin. I'm there. I didn't make it. But it's fine because we'll fix it in post. Welcome everyone to another episode of Picks to Watch live from South Korea. We're going to be looking at some of the fun and interesting champions that could be making their way to MSI 2022. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Starting off this list with some serious catitude, it's Rengar. Nothing will escape. After a number of positive changes on patch 12.6, the Pride Stalker could make a return to pro play. AGO Rogue and EU Masters already gave us a taster. The main thing that's brought Rengar back into popularity is the change to his passive, making it easier to be ferocious. Alongside some quality of life changes, this feline is looking plausible. Rengar can easily sink his claws into many top and jungle matchups thanks to his strong skirmishing power and single target damage. Accidentally bumping into him can have catastrophic repercussions. Usually, Rengar players like to bring their savagery to side lanes where they can hunt their prey and look for a pick while in teamfights, he excels at creating pressure through flanks and threatening the enemy AD carry. Alongside this, his battle roar can scare away the damage, giving him the feline flexibility to get in and out of fights while constantly being a nuisance. However, Rengar is pretty limited in his single target damage. After using his combo, he needs to create space and wait for cooldowns. A lot of his power comes from using his passive, so open river fights without many bushes can be difficult for him to optimize his output. Also, as a jungler, it's quite literally feast or famine for the predator. You want a Simba, not a Garfield. When it comes to Rengar's build, Umbral Glaive recently got a nice buff with its price reduction and reduced passive cooldown and has become a great option for early lethality. Essence Reaver is also a great option as it synergizes with Rengar's kit and leverages the crit changes to his Q. Eclipse and Gore Drinker are both solid options too, depending on if you want a damage build or a bruiser build. Conqueror is the common rune choice with Inspiration second, but rather than be copycats, some prefer to take advantage of First Strike and pair it with Domination. Orange, you glad to see him? Next up is Gangplank. They're not just oranges. Their blood oranges. The Saltwater Scourge always appears in pro play here and there, but I'm expecting to see a bigger dose of Vitamin C at MSI this year for a few reasons. Thanks to the mana cost reduction on his healing, his laning is now that much better. More importantly though, heavy hitters in the top lane have been nerfed, which could sail this captain to the priority list. Also, Bin is there. We all remember what happened. One big shot, Bin! Can you do it? Gangplank's main hook is his ability to bully in lane. He quite literally puts you through a trial by fire as he harasses you with his parlay to force his opponents to walk the plank. His team fighting can't be underestimated either, as his ultimate can leave his opponents a sunken wreck. And beware the barrels, the devastating and haunting barrels. Editors, don't you dare play the clip again. I said don't do it! A master of the seven seas, Gangplank knows a thing or two about waves. He can be an effective side laner as the game progresses thanks to his strong wave clear. His ult is excellent at cleaning up waves too, so even if he struggled in the 1v1 matchup, he'll have tools to deal with them split pushing later on. Still, a pirate's life isn't always a barrel of laughs, as there are plenty of counters that stop GP from being a good blind pick. There are champions that can mitigate his effectiveness in lane, and then use his lack of mobility to punish him with a dive. Plus, he can also struggle against long range comps who can kill his barrels from far away. GP heavily relies on landing his barrels in teamfights, otherwise he'll quickly sink to the murky depths of a grey screen with nothing to show for it. Typically, Gangplank will look to plunder items that revolve around crypt, prioritizing Essence Reaver, Prowler's Claw, a few crit cloaks, and an Infinity Edge. However, others have shown a preference for Trinity Force into Collector. As for runes, you'll often see Grasp of the Undying with Inspiration second. And finally, the man who's extremely good at sticking them with the pointy end. It's Pantheon. Stand up. Face me again. Fresh out of the oven after minor buffs in patch 12.8, the wannabe baker could become a high whisk, high reward support in pro play once more. Pantheon is a champion that thrives off violence. Early fighting and roaming is what makes him an effective pick. If Pantheon can get cooking with early kills both in lane and on the map, it can only be a recipe for disaster for the opposing AD carry. 
Recent changes to his Aegis Assault make short trades much easier in lane as he can dive in, drop his combo, then disengage with his shield before he can get chased down. The small buff to his ult will also make his roams and side lane assaults that much more impactful. Imagine being hit by a star with a spear. While these plays are great whenever Pantheon lands on his feet, a single misplay can result in a rapid fall from grace. And as well as being super feast or famine, his lack of utility means Pantheon falls off really hard in the late game with his limited peel options and, because he's playing support, he can't make enough dough to get the big damage items he would need. For Pantheon's not-so-secret recipe, the key ingredient is the recently buffed Umbral Glaive which offers loaves of value, helps with map control, and also gives him a bit more killing power early. Eclipse is a great follow-up item if you can get the dough. And when it comes to starting items, Black Mist Scythe and Pauldrons are both great options to make up the buttery biscuit base of the build. Press the Attack and Conqueror are both viable rune choices with Inspiration as a typical secondary. That does it for this episode of Picks to Watch. If there are any fun or interesting champions you think could be making their way into pro play, be sure to go into the comment section below and let me know. MSI starts on May the 10th and you won't want to miss it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Betty, we're done now. Okay, I'm good. Do you want to get out the box? No, I'm good. Are so much sure? room in here. We've got to finish now, Betty. No, I'm good, mate. I'm good.